Hello again and welcome back to the channel. For this episode, I wanted to talk about patch order, input list, and stage plots. As you're headed out to your one-offs and festival gigs, one thing that will make the day go smoother for everyone is an input list and a stage plot. That way, the production company can quickly prepare and pin your band for a smooth and efficient changeover as multiple bands are coming and going on stage all day long. First, there is the input list. This lists the instruments on stage, the drums, the guitar amps, the keys, the vocalist, and the channel order. One area that usually gets a lot of controversy online is the subject of the channel order. Does it matter? No? And yes, very much so. While the kick drum will sound the same in channel 16 or channel 48 as it does in channel 1, there is an industry standard layout for inputs. It's not about sound though, it's about consistency. As you can see by the input list on screen, they all follow similar patterns. This makes it very easy for sound system providers to turn over bands on stage with minimal complications. It makes the onstage patch second nature, follows a logical order, and it makes troubleshooting easier. What I think sometimes happens is inexperienced band engineers will usually develop a patch order based on nothing but the assumption that it doesn't matter. And you can understand that thought process. If you know it sounds the same no matter how you patch everything, then just figure out something that seems to make sense and do that every time and get used to it. But that neglects to look down the road. The question of what is the norm is something that doesn't get considered. Much of the argument about workflow is simply what the person has gotten used to, not some grand idea where they've reinvented the wheel. Typically, a basic input list will be drums, bass, keys, guitars, and vocals, and usually with instrument groups flowing from stage right to stage left, and the same for vocals, vocals from stage right to stage left. That is also the same order you see them in from your front of house position, stage right to stage left. Their stage position matches their fader position. So there is a method to this madness, and not just something that refuses to modernize for no apparent reason. And that is why it makes troubleshooting easier when chasing lines, because they do follow a logical order that experienced techs know by heart. This all brings us to the stage plot. The stage plot is just a graphical representation of the position of the band and their instruments on stage. This tells the PA provider where to lay out the lines and monitors on stage for the band. It doesn't have to be a great work of art, though. Even Microsoft Paint can be used. You can even draw it by hand and scan it to your computer. These days there are even online stage plot generators that you can use. I'll leave a link below for that. The stage plot is normally an overhead view of the stage, with the top being the upstage area and the lower side being the downstage area. Downstage is the area closest to the audience. The plot should show the relevant positions of the drums, amps, instruments, and vocalists and where the monitors are needed. And it should show where you'll need AC power. Make sure you put your contact information on these documents, ideally a phone number and an email contact. Try and get your input list and stage plot to the promoter from the moment you've booked the show, but also assume the promoter won't forward it to the production company and try and make sure and do that yourself if you can, as soon as you can. Always have these materials with you day of show as well. There is another layer to all of this that you're likely to run across, and that is the festival patch. The festival patch is simply a patch where the sound system provider has already laid out an input list that should cover all of the bands and surprises for the day. Extra lines already ran and marked to be used as needed in different areas or zones on the stage. When you're patched in, there may be open channels that you don't need, but if you're used to working on a normal input patch, it won't matter. You'll still have everything in the same general area of the console, and your instrument groups will still be flowing in that same stage right to stage left order. So it'll all still be familiar. This all takes on even more importance if you carry your own in-ear monitor package with Splitter. That will be the subject of another video, so if you have anything you'd like to see specifically covered in that, please comment below. If you're unfamiliar with the various stage terms like stage right, upstage, downstage, etc., this video explains them and shows examples, so click here. If you like information like this, please like and subscribe to the channel, 
The Patreon page link is in the text below. Check out the other videos, and I will see you next time.